Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here, and today we're talking about this week's ColourPop release. This is a whole pink cowgirl themed collection, and the palette is called One and Done, so I think it's sort of the One and Done slash cowgirl collection. I don't know what they're going to call it, but that's what I'm going to call it. This collection is launching on May 19th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the ColourPop site. I'm not sure if or when this will be available at Ulta, but I do know there will be a full collection set. I believe it will be priced at $105. That's for all of the pieces in this collection. And you will be able to use codes for this on the ColourPop site. I have an affiliate code. It's just my first name, Amanda. You can use that at checkout to save 10% on most things on the ColourPop site. So if you want to save a couple bucks on your purchase at the same time, it definitely helps to support this channel and keep things running here. It definitely helps me out a lot. So I appreciate everybody who does choose to use my code. And I hope to make this video worth your while. I'm going to show you a bunch of close-ups. We're going to do swatches. I'm going to do some palette comparisons. All the usual fun stuff that we do here. So we're going to start with the Soul Body products from this collection. We have a little glow duo here. It has a glow oil and a shimmering dry oil, both in the mini size. And I believe these will only be sold in this duo for $18. They didn't give me a price for them individually, so perhaps they will offer those. But as far as I know right now, these will only be sold in the set. The shimmering dry oil is called Hop On, and the glow oil is called Giddy Up. I'm going to show you close-ups of these individually. Now, when it comes to the shimmering dry oils, they do settle, so you need to shake these up before you apply them, but they're really fun to shake up and then look at all of the pretty, pretty glitters floating around inside. I don't know if you're as easily amused as I am, but I just think these are so beautiful. Now, formula-wise, Personally, I prefer the glow oils if I'm going to wear a product like this on my actual body. I like the more glowy look versus this really glittery look. Here I'm showing you what it looks like all just sort of dumped onto my arm. And once you rub it in, it gives quite a nice glittery metallic sheen on the skin. All in all, these are the same type of formula, same components, same beachy tanning oil type of scent that all of the other Soul Body products have. But I wanted to show you a little close up individually of these and what they look like on the skin. Actually, in their not quite rubbed in state and then in the more evenly dispersed like how you would actually wear it these aren't super easy to swatch so hopefully i'm giving you a good enough idea of what these actually look like when applied i i really like these honestly this glow oil is beautiful it reminds me of one of my favorites that's been discontinued the rosé shade i really loved that one and i believe that they got rid of it so this could be a nice little replacement now we're going to move on to the ColourPop products first we have a glitterly obsessed mini trio this is going to be priced at 12 us dollars and like i said you get three little minis in here now the glitterly obsessed glitters they are a little gel type of glitter thingy these are not intended for use in the eye area. They're meant to be for body and hair. I know some people put them on their face too. I'm not a big glitter type of gal, but you know, if you are, then this is probably exciting. It's been a while since they've released many new glitterly obsessed shades. And this one, Chase, is seems pretty basic. It seems like a lot of the others that they've released. But this middle one called Spinner is actually pretty cool. It has these little teeny tiny gold stars in the glitter. This is just so cute. It definitely fits the collection, the theme really well. I'm not crazy 
about the glitters and I'm not really crazy about the whole cowgirl theme either but I do think that it's going to speak to a lot of people it's definitely something different for them so just because it's not personally speaking to me doesn't mean I think it's bad I actually think that this is a great idea for this collection I love the idea of somebody showing up to like 4-H or you know some sort of equestrian event just dripping in this gold glitter body glitter so that's very fun to me i love the idea of putting glam in this type of setting and i think that this is going to speak to a lot of people now let's talk about the blushes we have three different pressed powder blushes these will be priced at 12 us dollars a piece the outer packaging looks pretty similar but you can tell on the tops and on the backs of the boxes and the blushes the names are printed onto the boxes there's no little stickers or anything these are really well done i like the details here yes i very much painted my nails to match this collection because of who i am as a person so just because i'm not into glitter and animal print doesn't mean that i'm not extra in my own way okay <laughs> Now, the blushes themselves. They have these cute little compacts. They have the little horseshoe and the star stamped in. Each one of the compacts does have a small mirror inside. I like it when they do these little detail like stamps into the powders themselves. All three of these blushes are completely matte. We're not getting any little annoying glittery blushes. No offense if you love those. I'm sure there's a market for that. I just personally don't like it. Now I think you can kind of tell looking at this blush in particular. Sadly, this is my favorite one and you can tell just from swatching it, it's already getting sort of hard on top. I think maybe it's just over pressed, but this last one, Burn Card, this really, really intense bright pink. This one has a totally different texture compared to the other two blushes. So the very, very pale pink called Prairie Air and the brown one, which I love a really brown blush, the brown one called Bankroll. You can tell here in the swatch, those two were pretty thin. And you know, if you like a more sheared out blush, maybe that'll work well for you. But Burn Card is intensely pigmented. It feels totally different from the other two. So if you're gonna go with one, if, especially if you're interested in Burn Card, I think that's the best blush of this release. Next up, we have some Fresh Kiss Lip Lacquers. These will be sold individually for $8 a piece or you can get the set of all four colors for $28. These just have the little shade name stickers on top. And then when we look at the actual lipsticks themselves, some cute little horseshoe packaging on here. Even though I don't feel personally connected to this theme, I do think they did a really good job executing it. It really is cute, even though it's not my taste. I think a lot of people are going to love this, and I'm excited about that. Even though I'm not going crazy for it, I know there are going to be a lot of people who do. Now, these Fresh Kiss lip lacquers are the same style of component, despite the special kind of printing and whatnot. It's the same exact formula, same applicator. If you want more information about these, I have a whole video about this formula. It's not my favorite of the Fresh Kiss formulas. I prefer the Glossy Lip Stain, but if you're curious to hear more about this particular formula, I will try to remember to link my lip lacquer video so that you can hear my thoughts about that. I like the colors here. They fit the theme really well. I love that we did half neutrals, half brights. I'm a neutral girl myself, but I think these hot pinks work really well in the context of this collection. So, you know, not my favorite formula, but I'm not mad about it. Now, lastly, we have the one and done palette. This is priced at 18 US dollars. And when we look at the packaging, both the box and the palette have the exact same artwork. Just the main difference as always, the outer box has that ingredients list and the palette itself 
does not have the ingredients list. So that's really the main difference. I always point that out to you in case you are somebody with any ingredient sensitivities, you wanna make sure you keep that box. There is one shade with an eye safety warning that you need to patch test. No surprise, it's that hot pink matte shade called High Roller. I will link my video where I go in depth about patch testing and eye safety warnings in case you need a little refresher on that info. Now, when we take a look inside this palette, first of all, there's no mirror in here. This is just their regular heavy duty cardboard packaging. And these are the big pans. So the larger size pans interchangeable with something like the Limoncello palette or the Powerpuff Girls, something like that. There are five true matte shades, five shimmers, three of which are duochromes, one matte shade with glitter, and no pressed glitters. The three duochrome shades are the white to gold called Cowgirl, and then on the middle row we have You Bet, which is a peach to gold, and then Coattails, which is kind of that classic sheer bronze to blue sort of they put they seem to be putting this in a lot of palettes and i i don't hate it i just wish that we would get a better variety when it comes to putting in a cute little duochrome like this but that's just one girl's opinion now you are looking at both finger and brush swatches here finger swatches on top brush swatches below no primer i always use a completely dry brush just so you can see a couple of different application methods and how these look really nice and close up on the skin pretty consistent performance for me formula wise now we're gonna do some comparisons first a comparison with these two nine pan palettes mixed together I thought Nude Mood and Ooh La La would make a great little comparison here. I was not disappointed. You could pretty much get almost all of the exact same shades. Maybe two or three are a little bit off here and there. But overall, if you have Nude Mood and Ooh La La, which are some OG nine pan palettes, then you already have these colors. Not that I will judge you for rebuying, obviously. Next one that came to mind for me when I was trying to think of pink meets neutral color stories, I thought of this Truly Madly Deeply palette, and it turns out that while they are a similar vibe, there's not a lot of overlap here. I think these could be great companion palettes because the color stories work well together, but there's not a bunch of dupe shades among these two palettes. Now, the same can't be said for some other mega palettes. More pink meets neutral here in the Smoke and Roses palette. Now, Smoke and Roses is a little bit more cool toned. We're missing those warmer orangey brown shades that One and Done brings to the table, but I do think this one is closer than the Truly Madly Deeply palette. Still not exactly the same. You could definitely justify having both of these palettes, at least in my opinion. I mean, I could justify having a lot of palettes. Anyway, moving on. The It's All Good Mega Palette is almost the exact same shades. When you look at this, it's really hard to tell the difference. If you have It's All Good, you definitely have every single one of these shadows. Again, I will not judge you. If you love packaging, if you love these colors, whatever it may be, you're allowed to have whatever you want. But I'm telling you right now, if you have It's All Good, you have all of these colors and then some because It's All Good is a 30 pan palette. So that is the whole collection. For me personally, I feel like there's nothing that's really calling to me and really drawing me in just because we didn't really hit on any of my personal favorite formulas, any of my personal favorite themes or colors as far as the palette goes. Performance wise, these are great across the board. Everything's really on par. The only thing I really felt was lackluster were the two lighter blushes, the pressed powder blushes. Now you can get them to work for sure. They're definitely buildable, but it was really noticeable the difference in texture and pigmentation between the light pink and the brown and that really, really hot pink shade. So if you were going to go with one, 
I would personally recommend that really fun, bright, bright pink blush called Burn Card. Otherwise, I don't think there are any duds here. It's just not really my personal cup of tea. But I think if any of this speaks to you, or if you're feeling really excited about these colors and this theming, I don't think you will be disappointed at all. My personal top picks are probably the Soul Body Oils and that bright pink blush burn card, but I would love to hear what you think about this collection. Are you interested in this? Is this really tugging at your heartstrings? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all of your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. And I love your face. Okay, bye! Thank you.